right, you guys, what's going on? We made it to California. We're back. It's been so many years, but right now we can't get distracted. We'll talk about that later. Behind me is the 2023 MC20 cello. Cello, cello, cello. But the MC20 cello is a V6 supercar from a manufacturer that has a rich brand history that they have to live up to. Is it a truly dialed in focused driver's car? There are so many questions, but let's go for a drive. We've got an incredibly twisty road behind me. Lots of fun, sun is shining. It's a good day, come for a drive. And the doors that go up. God, this forged carbon fiber, the first thing, it, it literally just shoves itself into your face when you open the door. Beautiful matte finish on that, and a lot of matte finish on the carbon fiber on the interior here. I'll get to the options at the end of the video because there are a lot. All right, first things first, nose lift up. That is standard on all MC20s. It better be. That is absolutely necessary in a vehicle like this. All right, MC20 Cielo. I'm going to do this video, as you can tell, with the top up, mostly for sound, because in a second you're going to hear <laughs> the turbo spool, the intake, right behind my left ear. I was not expecting that. The first thing you notice when you get in this car, uh, one is just kind of the airiness and good visibility that you you actually do get. And then come the sounds. Now, V6, that's the big elephant in the room, okay? So this is a three liter twin turbo named Natuno, Maserati in-house developed V6. 90 degree dry sump. It is an over square engine, so that means the stroke is shorter than the bore. Lower piston speed, higher revs. In short, that's exactly what it means. Now, uh, what do we have? Red line here of just about 8,000 RPM. It sounds like, uh, you know, I'm getting Supra vibes, single turbo Supra, not in terms of inline six versus V6, but strictly the amount of audible feedback I'm getting from the engine. This is like, my first time driving an MR2 Turbo all over again, but turned up to 11. Oh my God, I can barely talk. <laughs> I can do that all day. 630 horsepower, 539 pound-feet of torque. Power's way up top, of course. Torque is from 3,000 RPM onwards, so even down here, third gear, 3,000 RPM, and there is just a massive shove of torque. Now this is a non-hybrid rear wheel drive supercar, which means it can be light. So with a curb weight of right around 3,400 pounds, the importance comes in how the front axle is able to keep itself light versus something like on the lower end, the Corvette E-Ray, and on the higher end, the SF90 or upcoming Temerario. Heavyweights compared to the MC20. And even the 296 GTS, a rear wheel drive, V6 top down rival, couldn't resist the added power of a hybrid system at the cost of, you guessed it, added weight. Yes, there is a weight sacrifice of 143 pounds for the Cielo to have the top down, but... <laughs> Steering is incredibly sharp, by the way. This thing is laser precise. Yeah, see, rear end just wagging a little bit. Super balanced. I get the feeling that this engine is very stressed. It is, it is high stress. Now, I don't know how much boost they're pumping through here, but I, I feel it in my spine. I feel it when my eyeballs just get sucked back. Now here on the street, like the steering isn't as good as the McLaren GT, the 720S, as the GT3 RS. It's just not, it, it's as precise and there's a ton of confidence in the front end. Like so much grip, you could toss it around. It feels, the car feels lightweight, but just a, a little bit of the tire feel 
doesn't come through. Like, I wish there was more going on there. Huge carbon ceramics, brake feel, so firm, so dialed. The MC20 on the street, at least, feels lightweight and snappy, with no sense the car is holding your hand in any way, for better or worse. But is that enough to set it apart from the 296 and Artura? There's a reason Maserati offers a cartoonish logo for the deck lid of these cars, and no, it's not so you can break out your drone if you forgot where you parked. Maserati simply doesn't have the same brand recognition, especially among younger buyers, as McLaren, Ferrari, or Lamborghini. Even McLaren, a relatively new kid on the block when it comes to building modern mid-engine road cars, has the ultimate halo to look back on, while Maserati has, well, the MC12, which in a few words is a reskinned Ferrari Enzo. Ouch. So where does that leave the MC20? Well, it leaves it without the added complexity of a heavy hybrid system, something we've all blamed for the plateau of excitement we're feeling towards the next generation hypercars. So the MC20 is a bit old school? We're off to a great start. thousand RPM. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Not quite as satisfying to rev out as the V8 McLarens. Also, I feel like this is a little bit more accessible at lower speeds than something like a 720S. And that's a good thing. I don't want my supercar to only be exciting at speeds that'll get me arrested. The MC20 caters to the street more than the track, and I'm all for it. Does it sound as good as a V8 McLaren? Well, no. Does it have as much power as a 296? No. But not once did I want any more than the car was giving me. Now, eight-speed DCT here, built by Tremec with Maserati. I don't ask anything more of it. Like I couldn't ask much more of it. You got a great view out of the hood, the front fender arches coming out, this beautiful aquamarina color. It's probably not coming through on camera as good as it looks here in person, but I promise you so much blue comes out. Whereas in the shadows, it's kind of got this silver, just a stunning car in design. The Cielo doesn't do a lot uh, when it comes to reducing or sacrificing any usability that the standard coupe might have. So it has the exact same amount of storage space. We've got the chromatic glass roof, which if you touch a button quickly here down on the touch screen, then it will basically go matte and cover, I don't know, some percentage of UV rays from getting in, keeping the cabin nice and cool. And that's what Maserati is aiming the MC20 to be is an everyday supercar that fits the kind of, not only the motorsports lifestyle, where you can take it on track, whatnot, but also the luxury aspect of it. So adaptive suspension is of course standard here. And with these drive modes that I mentioned, we have wet, GT, sport, and Corsa. Now, in all of these drive modes, you're not able to completely adjust your suspension from soft to hard any way you want. There's not a fully custom mode, but if you're in sport, let's say you can do either soft or the mid suspension setup. But when you're in Corsa, you can only do the mid or hard suspension setup. So is it comfortable? Yeah, absolutely. They've done a lot with the steering rack to kind of minimize vibrations coming through and on, oh, there's a big bump there. Soak that up nicely. Doesn't really follow ruts in the road and on California's terrible freeways, which I have not been used to because I live in a country that <laughs> takes care of our population. I'm just kidding. We have no people compared to the population of LA. Um, yeah, it soaks up the bumps really well. It's kind of an odd combination because the seats are really stiff. The seats are Italian sized. They're made for me and they're somewhat stiff, but then the suspension in soft is really nice and smooth. Uh, in Corsa, it's virtually undrivable on the road. Steering wheel is perfect. 
Well, I will say the Alcantara option steering wheel here has lost a little bit of its youth. Palms are sweaty in the Maserati MC20 and it's beginning to show. Really clean, simple to use, not too complicated. In fact, it's almost like it's not as Italian as I would have liked it to be. As I mentioned, the steering wheel is perfect. They haven't gone the Ferrari route of having a ton of haptic feedback. Buttons on here, which is awesome. And then down here, there's a touch screen. Easy to use. And of course, has uh, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Down here is your wireless phone charger. I did not think it was gonna keep it intact, <laughs> alive on an aggressive drive, but it did. Uh, down here, MC20 logo, of course, a ton of Alcantara. This one's got the extended Alcantara pack. It also has the optional carbon fiber up there, a ton of carbon fiber everywhere. But the most important thing here is that the top goes down. So if we go here, oh, actually, before we do that, one small gripe about the infotainment. Easy to use. Like I said, not even like, there's no Italian words here. There's no kind of like confusion or like buttons in wrong places. It's a little bit odd. It's, it's less Ferrari than I thought it was gonna be, but I guess that makes sense because of course that's going along with the V6 engine being an Italian or a Maserati uh, engine. The rest of the car is just, it's really easy to use. It's not as Italian as I may have wanted it to be. The native maps here is fine. It has been unresponsive at times. So even here, if I try to zoom out, it will not zoom out all the time. Then if I move and then I zoom out, okay, now it's working. Now you guys know where kind of I am, but <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there you go. It's not, it's not the greatest. There are a couple little quirks like that. Everything else in my experience works good. You do, however, have to hold the touch screen to do the top down. So if we go like this, we just hold that. And then the process begins. 12 seconds to do that and we're done. Also digital rear view mirror because the visibility is terrible. Best part about this is, and I didn't even think about this, driving a low car at night, headlights aren't annoying. If you've ever driven like a low mid-engine car, you know, <laughs> I've caught myself at lights, like just throwing the mirrors out of whack to try and deflect the light somewhere else because it's annoying. But this solves that issue, which is so good. And here she is, top down, just beautiful. The hips of the car coming up here, huge intakes. That's where all the noise is coming from. That's the culprit but just like a clean flowing design. I do like how the entire lower section of the car is carbon fiber. All the stuff on the interior is like a matte finish. On the exterior, it's gloss. I like that 20 inch forged wheels. These are like the top end optioned wheels here. I think they look really cool. It's got kind of the, the tri spoke going with the Maserati tri theme. One, two, three, you can see that there. Really simple. So my worry was just that the MC20 was gonna end up being a kind of last ditch hurrah, kind of last ditch effort to chase the likes of Ferrari and McLaren with their new V6 supercars, just to prove that they could do it and then disappear off the face of the planet. That doesn't seem to be the case. We all wanna see real driver's cars. And of course the GT2 Stradale version of this car, insane track focused version, kind of proves that. Now, what could work out well for the brand and what seems to be happening here, I hope this is happening, now hear me out. The MC20 EV is coming. There's gonna be an all electric version of this car coming and right now there's no hybrid. That's a little bit strange when compared to the other cars, right? So this could signal, and I hope it does, a kind of divergence in the model lineup right, where you have an MC20, a gas-powered, lightweight, rear-wheel drive version of the car like we have behind us uh, that hopefully gets crazier and just kind of tweaked and refined, right? And, th and then on the other side of things, you have an all-wheel drive, torque vectoring, high horsepower EV that's just insane, all about the numbers. You guys get the idea. But as far as driver feel, the MC20, I hope, just sticks to that formula. Now, will this be the last gas-powered Maserati supercar with the engine in the middle? It might be. 
It might be, but we have to enjoy them while they're here, of course, as the cliche goes. You know, in a city like Los Angeles, there is such a juxtaposition between the grueling reality of the commute on the freeway system here, but then when you get out onto the canyon roads like this, that's where this car has a true dual personality, uh, and I think it succeeds at doing that, at being both a comfortable, daily, drivable car that isn't too large or annoying, although the doors could get in the way if you have like a height restriction, but it's overall, it, caters to what exactly I imagine an MC20 buyer is, especially with the top down, which is Southern California. Now what's also going on at Maserati seems to be kind of conflicting statements about the brand's future. I don't know if you guys have heard, Maserati's not doing that well. Of course, owned by Stellantis, very closely linked to Alfa Romeo. What does the future hold? You know, top level positions at Maserati have been changing over, changing hands, CFO, CF, CEO, rather, uh, all of these positions have been not stable. And at the end of the day, a, a deterioration or potential deterioration, I, I don't know <laughs> the inside workings exactly at Maserati, but in that scenario, hypothetically, a deterioration of upper level management and company culture, what does that mean? Well, that means a deterioration of the feeling you get when you drive the car, as cliche and dumb as that sounds, that's like the last 1% of a driving experience uh, that you can't put in a spec sheet. But what's weird is like that hasn't affected, whatever's going on behind the scenes has not affected the MC20 as it stands here. The MC20 as a vehicle <laughs> is just, it's outstanding. It's capable, it's comfortable, it's all of the above. Uh, and yes, to some, it could be missing that v6 sound but you know so is a 911 turbo so is a turbo s right um so hopefully you guys enjoy this video i've got a ton more videos here in california while i'm here and then we're off to vegas for sema i've never been it's gonna be a lot of fun see you guys then